I'm Catherine Thompson, Technology Analyst at Edison, and I'm here today with Walt Mayo, CEO of Expert.ai. Hi, Walt. Hey, Catherine. How are you? Very well, thanks. You, you recently reported your FY20 results. Uh, could you just give us uh, an outline on that, please? Yeah, it was, a, uh, it was an extraordinary year at, at every level, really a transformative year for, for the company. I came in in February as the first outside non-founder CEO, and it was all part of our belief that the market is at an inflection point for mass adoption of AI-enabled natural language understanding technology, and that we're the ones who are going to drive that. So we outlined a strategy. We raised growth capital. Uh, we brought in an entire senior team, a new chief revenue officer, new chief marketing officer, chief product officer. Um, we've got some tremendous talent that we brought in at the senior leadership level, folks who have deep experience with high growth enterprise software as a service companies. And then on the business side, what we set out to do was focus on a, a couple key priorities. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that we did well against all of them. Uh, first of all, there's a focus on growth in the United States. So we're, as you know, coming from Italy originally and still Europe focused. And so we see the US as a, as a clear growth opportunity. And we were able to grow our revenues just under 40% year on year in the US. Um, in addition, we wanted to really accelerate a transition to a software as a service model because we were coming from a kind of legacy perpetual license background and uh, we were just under 90% of our software revenue was software as a service. So that, that was another great milestone for us, up pretty meaningfully from the previous year where we were at about 70, 76%. And then finally, um, we're continuing to expand our, our partner channel. That's a big part of how we intend to scale, doing that last bit of customization in the enterprise. And so we drove our partner revenue up 32% year on year to about 14% of our total revenue. So on balance, we were, we were really pleased with the, the results that we delivered on the, on the core strategic areas. Um, so you mentioned um, the investment you've made as part of your path to lead five-year growth strategy. Uh, could you talk us through the technology roadmap incorporated in the strategy, including progress you've made so far and what you still have to do? Yeah, I mean, the, the core of our strategy is to offer a platform with the tools and the workflow to simplify dramatically the ability to bring AI, natural language understanding technology to bear, to power any application across any domain for any workflow. For two basic use cases, one, knowledge discovery. So out of the massive language data that's out there, what's important and relevant? And then the other is process augmentation and acceleration. So anytime you're dealing with language, the ability to do it in a way that is is, is meaningfully accelerated, right? So those are the two core use cases. And the platform that, uh, that, that we developed started work in earnest in uh, June, July, and we just released it in beta on the 31st of March. So that is a, a milestone achievement for us. That's actually really quick as well. We'll have it for general availability in June, and at that time, we also will announce the first customer who has adopted the platform because that customer is already in beta with us. So we're giving early availability. So that's one, the platform, and we're, we're incredibly excited about it. We, um, we think it, it does two things that no one else in, in the industry does. One is it creates a workflow that is dramatically simpler. And, and what that means is you can bring the technology to bear across more use cases more rapidly without having to have large numbers of specialist data scientists, for example, right? So that's one. The other is, this is the first true hybrid natural language platform. And by hybrid, we mean orchestrating 
a wide variety of different approaches to natural language understanding, AI, and providing them in a single platform that delivers the best across whatever use case you might face, right? So it's those two things. So that's on the platform side. And then it, we're also introducing a, a kind of velocity model that's API driven, right? So very light, you can get on in, an, in under an hour and you can begin to realize some of the benefit of having a natural language understanding engine in your application or workflow. That came out at the beginning of the year as well. So we've got a really robust platform, will be generally available in June. And then we have an API driven cloud hosted natural language understanding engine that's available now. So we're pretty, pretty excited by the progress we're making. Great. And could you outline how you plan to commercialize the technology? Well, there's, um, it, it follows the, 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 the two, two approaches that I just outlined, right? So the, the platform, currently our go-to market is primarily focused on vertical solutions. Our core verticals are insurance, publishing information services, media, financial services, life sciences. So we're going in with an identified use case. We think that because we have simplified the platform so meaningfully, and because we now have this robust hybrid NL capability, that future proofs an investment for any enterprise customer, it's going to really broaden the available market for us. So we intend to go out with a platform leading sale as opposed to a vertical solution. And with that platform, what we will do is present to the enterprise the incredible array of, of opportunities that, uh, that they can realize through the, through the platform, right? So all of the natural language understanding from email classification to customer sentiment analysis through to powering workflows, forms, processes, whatever it might be, right? So we really see this as an enabling platform. So, so that's going to be really second half of the year. And then what we're working on right now as well is this, this volume market to, to see whether through our APIs, we're able to offer a lighter, uh, quicker path to getting some really robust natural language understanding capability. So top down, bottom up to mirror the two technology approaches that we're bringing to bear. Um, the recent news that Microsoft is planning to buy Nuance Communications, so uh, a speech recognition technology company has really raised the profile of natural language um, understanding or processing technology. Um, what are your thoughts on the market and where do you think expert fits in? Well, I, I think um, what, what that really highlights is that even for the giants in the technology field, right? When you're talking about Microsoft, that the kind of focus capability that's required for language as a problem set and applying AI to that is challenging. We get the question sometimes, well, gee, what happens if Google decides that they wanna win in that marketplace? Well, fair enough, but what we often find is that the, the really big companies end up going down a path of finding somebody who's specialized. And I think that's what Microsoft did with Nuance. I mean, Nuance, I think was founded in 1992 or 1995, right? So it's been around for quite some long while. And uh, $20 billion that Microsoft invested. And Nuance now is focused primarily on conversational AI for healthcare. So Microsoft spent $20 billion for a subset of the natural language processing opportunity. So we look at that and you know, smiles from ear to ear because it looks to us like a really strong confirmation that one, it's still hard, even for the giants. And two, they're looking at it and saying, this is going to be very big. And just to sum up, do you think you could outline what milestones investors should look for over the next 12 months? 
Well, I mean, there's um, there's some pretty obvious ones around the, the the platform rollout and release, right? So we don't anticipate any meaningful risk there. So we'll be looking to to bring it out into the market in in mid June. The um, I think that this is going to be a back end loaded year because if you think about the transition that occurred last year, we really didn't have the full team on until almost Q4, right? And so we're building out that whole engine, but I would, uh, I would look for new, lo new logos in the United States for sure. Um, any logos outside of our core verticals, uh, insurance, publishing information, media, particularly in financial services or life sciences, and even beyond that, I think would be indication of a broader market acceptance. And then that bottoms up conversion where we're able to attract data scientists, developers, and business analysts who are free offering and then ultimately converted into an enterprise sale. I think those would all be healthy indicators that things are going well. Right. Well, thanks for the update, Walt. Um, exciting times ahead, and I look forward to seeing the, the path unfold. As always, a pleasure, Catherine. Thank you.